Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another recent reads on Sunday. And yes, there were no videos two Wednesdays in a row. I know, I'm sorry about that, but we are back home and we are back on track. So I hope for the next couple of weeks at least, I will go back to the rhythm of Sunday and Wednesday. I hope you missed me on Wednesday. <laughs> anyway, Reason Reads, the books that I finished and uh, look forward to what is up next. Um, there are two books that I actually can talk about. Uh, let's start with the first one that was a mystery. Elizabeth George, Deception on His Mind, uh, published in 1997. And this is number nine in the Inspector Lindley series that I'm reading together with Heidi from my reading, reading life. And we are slowly making our way through the so far 21 books. Number nine. Yes. Um, Inspector Lindley is uh, a, a series Elizabeth George is American, by the way, but the, the uh, series is set in England, in London mainly. Uh, detective, two detectives, uh, uh, Thomas Lindley, who is also a lord, and his um, second in command team member, who, however you want to call it, Barbara Havers, who is from a very working class background. So there is these two classes clashing, well, clashing, but working together in this series and i love both characters and the number this one number nine is exclusively focusing on barbara havers which not everybody when i when i looked at goodreads not everybody liked i didn't mind lindley being absent he was on holiday for no spoilers some reason <laughs> um but uh i i mean i like i love barbara barbara havers she is a very She's a very good uh, police woman, a very good detective. She is down to earth, um, uh, you know, practical, but she's also willing to learn. She has definitely less experience than Lindley. And in this book, she a couple of times uh, ruminates, reminisces about what she learned uh, from uh, working together with Inspector Lindley. And they became, over the course of the last eight books, they became more than colleagues. They became friends. But this one is also not set in London. It's set in a uh, uh, seaside village in Essex, where a former colleague of uh, Havers works as a DCI. Detective Chief Inspector, yes, I think that's it. And there's a murder um, in the Pakistani community. No, that that's not. That's the wrong way to say it. There, there's a murder victim who is part of the Pakistani community. So this is also a book that explores racial tensions in the late 1990s. It was so at times the mis mystery was was good it was a wild ride as heidi said <laughs> as heidi said which is true because it was a quite an unexpected um resolution in some ways um but we also realized uh the way in the 1990s late 1990s you would be still able to talk uh racial slurs you know the pakis and which we don't do anymore, thankfully. So there is at least some progress to be had in that, you know, 25 years. Um, but the murder mystery focuses very much uh, on these two different cultures, uh, trying to understand each other. Barbara Havers is given the role as a liaison between uh, the Essex police and the Pakistani community. And there is also uh, on their side a liaison with whom Barbara has um, a personal connection. No spoilers. Um, and then the mystery takes off from there. It, it's very layered. It's exploring themes, of course, like cultural differences. Uh, it's exploring themes like family pressures. 
pressures in general, job pressures, gender issues. Elizabeth George always looks at the women in the force or in this uh, book in the families and their role and the pressures that they face that are different from um, male from the man in the community or in the force. So it it's all. I mean, Elizabeth George. What I love about her. I love the characters. I said that, but and I love the mystery. She really does a good mystery. Uh, she gives good background. Her books are not thin, but she also always is able to tackle topics within the story, give those topics a place in the story, and not being you know heavy on the message. But there is still those topics are still there. And if you want to, you can think about them. So I really enjoyed this one, Deception on His Mind. Um, and um, there is kind of an uh, unresolved question. So I think, Heidi, maybe we will read the next books rather sooner than later, because I want to know <laughs> what happens next. Anyway, so that was the first book that I can talk about. Then I finished uh, a book, the one of the two possibilities of the for the book Naturalist Book Club in February. February is Black History Month. So Heidi and uh, Doris, Doris from my reading life, uh, picked two books by Black authors about something to do with black history. And I read this one um, by, oh dear, uh, Caroline was her first name. Yes, Caroline Finney, um, Black Faces, White Spaces, that explores, as the subtitle here says, the um, racism in connection with uh, the environment, environmentalism, the creation of um, natural reserves, parks in the U.S. Uh, so Finney is a black scholar, um, and this book looks at how we as a white society, and when I say we, it's in the U.S., so it's the white society in the U.S., but, I mean, you can, of course, draw that broader, but it's about the environmentalist and conservations of natural spaces in the U.S. and what that has to do uh, with racism and how black people are or aren't involved in creating those spaces and in using those spaces and in looking at nature from a black angle. And just to name one very small example that uh, she uses in the book. Um, if you have, for instance, in Germany, the forest, that's really a German thing. You know, we are the, the forest. But if you ha come from a culture like uh, uh, black people, slavery in the US, where forests are dangerous because trees are used for hanging and lynching, you might have a different perspective on the whole forest thing. <laughs> so th these um, angles, it's important to incorporate those. So I found that I have never read anything like it about this particular theme, and it was a perfect book for Black History Month. I will say, though, that this book is quite scholarly with, you know, references and a long bibliography. So I think it was geared in at least primarily or at the outset for a, a reading public more in the, you know, scholars. So it is a bit dry at times. And it's not, the language is not, don't expect, you know, um, kind of a narrative non-fiction uh, with personal anecdotes and things like that. I mean, there are, um, she's not only giving us scientific data or anything, don't get me wrong, and she talks about uh, events and also in brings her own experience in it, 
a few times, not very often, like when she goes to a conference about environmental environmentalism or conservationist issues and she's the only black person there, you know, stuff like that. But it is quite um, scientifically written and scholarly written. I didn't mind, but just beware if you're interested in the topic that you don't expect something that is a page turner, so to speak. Okay, then I finished a couple of books that will I will talk about in other videos. Um, for instance, the bus book of this month uh, by uh, Kylie Reed, Come and Get It. I will film a review for next Wednesday. Uh, but I also finished uh, books of the Booktube Prize that I can't talk about because the judging hasn't been finished. We will finish this round end of March. Um, this is my group. Um, a nonfiction, and I've read uh, three of those. I've read Molly um, by Blake Butler. I read Brave the Wild River, uh, and I read uh, Once We Were Family. I always make We Were Once a Family by Roxana uh, Asgarian, and I'm now working on uh, the fourth and the fifth one. So those. The Book Two Prize at the moment is also a big part of my reading, and I will talk about it some more um, beginning of April. So those are the books that I finished and that I can talk about. Um, and now what is up next? Uh, up next is a book for Karen from Run Right Reads Book Club. She has this Caribbean book club where she encourages us to read more Caribbean literature. And the pick for February uh, is this one, The Island of Forgetting by Jasmine Seeley. And I'm already halfway through. Um, it's um, Jasmine Seeley is uh, a Caribbean author from Barbados living in Canada. And this Island of Forgetting is a multi-generational tale of family Focusing on fathers and sons uh, a lot, but there's also, uh, it's not all male, they are, they are also women. And um, it, it uses um, Greek mythology as a, a vantage point into this history of, of the family. Um, and then I will also read uh, next week Madame de Lafayette, The Princess de Cleve, uh, translated uh, from the French by Terence Cave, first published in 1678. This is a book from my list of 1001 books that I have to read before I die. And also um, uh, the Sandy's book club, the, the 10 books she picks uh, for her book club. And I'm a co-host, as you probably know, if you follow my channel. And this is our first book of the year, the February book book. There was no book in January, Madame de Lafayette, uh, a short one, and I'm also about halfway through. And the other two books still up uh, are books that I have already mentioned the last time. I'm still working on Sarah Waters tipping the velvet, a buddy read with Lisa from uh, the Unhinged Woman Book Club. We are now finished, we have now finished part two, and we will finish part three uh, at the end of the month. So this book will go with me for the rem remaining couple of days of the month. And that, uh, and the last one, also a buddy read, uh, this time nonfiction, that is uh, The Personality Brokers by Merv Emre about the Myers, Myers, Myers Briggs uh, indicator, the personality test. And I'm reading this with Kathleen from Kathleen Ann. Um, and we will finish up this book uh, the end of next week. So this is the, the first of the, the two buddy reads that I will finish up. So those are the books that I'm working on. And of course, like I already said, I will uh, go on with the BookTube Prize books. So this is it for my recent reads on Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking very much forward to your comment and I'll see you all soon in the next one.